Hey, what's up guys? Alex here from Red Hot MTG, and I have a special deck tech for you today that I helped a good friend of mine build. You may know him as Mecha B on Twitch, but if you don't, he is a low-key streamer who does a lot of live music sessions and sometimes streams games like Call of Duty Warzone, RimWorld, and Overwatch. So if that sounds like something that interests you, I'll have all the links to his page in the description, so go check him out and maybe subscribe. So the deck we built was Rutha Mercurial Artist. She is a 1-4 Prismari Commander for 3 that has the ability to pay 2 and return her to its owner's hand and copy target instant and sorcery spell you control, and you may choose new targets for the copy. So she is obviously not the most overpowered commander on the market, but her ability to copy spells can get you a lot of value throughout a game regardless and can encourage fun play patterns without being oppressive and unfun to play against. When Robbie designed his original build, it was pretty much a basic spell slinger deck, but he felt it didn't really have a reliable win con. That was when I suggested we build the deck around another new card from Strixhaven, Dragon's Approach. Dragon's Approach is a 3 drop sorcery that does 3 damage to each of our opponents, and we can exile it and 4 other spells named Dragon's Approach from our graveyards to search up a dragon creature and put it onto the battlefield, and has the very important text line that a deck can have any number of cards named Dragon's Approach. So, through some playtesting, 15 copies is where we landed at so that we can reliably cast multiple per game, but the deck also has the infrastructure and draw to sustain itself throughout a game. So, the main focus of the deck now is to cast as many Dragon's Approach as possible and copy them to burn our opponents out, and get rewarded with our Spells Matter cards every time we do. So, with all that being said, let's jump into the deck list. So we will start off with the dragons that we will try and summon with all of our copies of Dragon's Approach. The deck has a kind of a hidden commander with Niv Mizzet, as this is the main dragon we are going to try and tutor up every game. And we run all three copies that are legal in a red-blue commander deck. So that would be Niv Mizzet Perun, Draco Genius, and the Firemind. Niv Mizzet Perun is the best in this deck in my opinion, but all of them help out our game plan of burning our opponents down and also drawing us some cards and having the other two give us options if we already found Perun in a game. And then we have a couple more dragons with Galazeth, Prismari, and Hypersonic Dragon, each of which are cheap enough mana-wise that we can cast them easily in a game if we draw into them, but also have a relevant effect in a Spell Slinger deck, and can be targets with the Dragon's Approach Tutor if, if that's what we feel like we need in the moment. Next up, we have the ramp category. This is a pretty mana intensive deck because you want to be able to play Rutha and cast spells and still have many to activate her ability to copy them. So to start out, we have Arcane Signet and Talisman of Creativity, which are just solid two mana rocks that can produce our colors. Then we have the Commander Staple Soul Ring, along with Warden Power Stone, both of which tap for two colorless mana. And finally, we have two bigger mana rocks with Hedron Archive and Thran Dynamo. You don't have to be worried about running so many colorless mana sources in this build, in my opinion, because Ruth's ability takes colorless mana, and Dragon's Approach only costs one red mana and then two colorless mana. So our main focus with the majority of our rocks is producing extra mana. Next up, we have some permanents that reduce our costs, which can be even more efficient forms of ramp in this deck. So to start out, we have Baral, Chief of Compliance, and Goblin Electromancer, who both reduce the cost of our instants and sorceries by one, which is important because paying only one or two mana for Dragon's Approach instead of three will give us more opportunity to play and use Rutha to copy it and maybe even cast multiple per turn. Then we have Primal Amulet slash Primal Wellspring, which does the same thing but can also turn into a land that copies spells when the mana it produces is used to cast them. Then we have the Modal Planeswalker pair, Rowan, Scholar of Sparks, and Will, Scholar of Frost, who have the same static ability but also have added utility with their Planeswalker abilities. I would say you'll probably want to cast Rowan most of the time because she can apply extra pressure to our opponent's life totals, and if you happen to get her ultimate off, you'll have another option to copy spells with, and also she only costs 3 mana compared to Will's 5. And the final two cards in this category help us activate our commander more, and that is Hearthstone and Training Grounds both of which reduce the cost of our activated abilities. With an effect like Rutha, two mana can seem very unplayable in a lot of situations because you have to have the mana to cast your stuff and also enough to cast her if she isn't already on the field. So reducing her activated ability down to one will give us more opportunity to utilize her more reliably throughout a game. 
these are great cards in any commander decks that have an activated ability on their commander. So you should be looking to play these more if that applies to you in other decks. With any Spellslinger deck, we want to get to the cards we want in our deck and make sure we have enough fuel in our hand to stay in the game. So in this category, we talk about some spells that let us do that and can also benefit from our Spells Matter effects. First up, we have the three main blue cantrips with Brainstorm, Ponder, and Preordain, all of which can help us churn through our deck more efficiently while also replacing themselves. Then we have Expressive Iteration and Augur of Bolas. Expressive Iteration is a great new spell from Strixhaven that can give us access to two cards for only two mana, although one of them is only playable that turn from Exile. It should be noted though that it does say play that card this turn, so you can Exile and play a land with this spell. Then, Augur is a creature that puts an instant or sorcery from the top three of our library into our hand. Then we have two bigger draw spells with Dig Through Time and Into the Story, both of which are just very efficient instant speed draw spells. Next up, we have Factor Fiction and Jessica's Will. Factor Fiction lets our opponents pick piles of cards, but we can usually always get what we want from those piles, and we can also use this card politically in some situations to get extra value. Then, Jessica's Will is just one of the most powerful red spells printed in a long time and can provide card advantage and the mana to play those cards if our commander is on the field. Then, we have Search for Ascanta, which allows us to put cards into our graveyard from the top of our library, but the main reason we run this is because when it flips into a land, it not only ramps us, but has an ability that lets us look at the top four of our library and put a non-creature, non-land card into our hand. Then, we have Mystic Remora, which is a very underrated card in my opinion. It's definitely not as powerful as Rhystic Study, but it is much less annoying to play against and to remember the triggers for, and it only costs one mana to play even though it won't stick around forever, it can still provide a lot of card advantage. Next up we have some interactive spells. Chaos Warp, Pongify, and Reality Shift are all great and efficient removal options in the Prismari colors. Mana Drain and Narset's Reversal are great counterspells and the ones we chose for this deck because Robbie and I had access to them, but there are certainly many other more budget-friendly counters that will also work just as well. It's also worth noting that Narset's Reversal unfortunately returns the countered spell to its owner's hand, but lets us copy that spell and choose our own targets, which can be a big power shift play if used on the right spells. Then we have Dual Caster's Mage and Reverberate, which allow you to copy any spell and choose new targets for the copies, which are very flexible in allowing you to double up your own powerful spells or take advantage of the ones your opponents cast. It can also be noted that Dual Caster Mage is a creature and will not trigger any of your spell matters effects, so I can understand the argument to replace him with Twin Cast. Prismari Command is next and a very good and flexible spell. Many of the commands have many effects on them that aren't very playable and can be very overcosted, but these effects will probably get you good value regardless of the stage in your game when you play it. And then to end this list out, we have three board wipes with Blasphemous Act, Rolling Earthquake, and Psychonic Rift. Now that we've talked about all the spells in this deck, let's go over the spell payoff cards. First up, we have Electrostatic Field and Gutter Snipe, which allow us to hit all of our opponents for extra damage every time we cast a spell. Both of these will put in a lot of work throughout a game if they aren't answered immediately, but will have big targets on their backs, so try and wait to play them when you know you can get at least a little bit of value out of them. Then we have Burgi, God of Storytelling, and Storm Kiln Artist, both of which give us extra mana for each of our spells. It's also worth noting that while you'll mostly be playing Burgi in this deck, Hornfell, Horn of Bounty could be a flexible option if you're desperate for card advantage. Next up, we have Young Pyromancer and Sahili Sublime Artificer, which create 1-1 one -one tokens and can help give us a board presence without needing a lot of creatures in the deck. Tauran Sky Summoner and Murmuring Mystic take this a step further and give us tokens that also have flying, which can become threats on their own if left alone long enough. And finally, we have Archmage Emeritus, which draws us an additional card for each spell that we cast. I'm not going to go over the whole land base for this deck, but there are a couple standouts that I want to mention. 
First up, Mystic Sanctuary is a great land to add into any Spellslinger deck that can get you back your really powerful spells with basically no cost to your deck building design. Then we have Myriad Landscape, which is pretty efficient at ramping you when you need to, but also taps for mana itself. It's a decent option in any deck that doesn't run green. Then we have Ancient Tomb and Temple of the False Gods, both of which tap for 2 mana, if you get Temple of the False Gods online. This is a very mana hungry deck as I mentioned before, so having these lands that can activate Rutha on their own can be huge. I know a lot of people really dislike Temple of the False Gods because it's not always reliable, but in a deck like this where there's a good bit of draw and cantripping you should always be able to hit 5 lands to turn it on, and the extra ramp will really benefit this deck. And then we have Maze of Ith, which doesn't tap for any mana, but allows us to remove a creature from combat. I don't normally consider this card for my land base, probably because I tend to lean towards aggressive decks, but I think it fits really well into this build. Spellslinger decks don't tend to have the biggest board presence due to prioritizing spells, which can lead to a lot of incidental damage from people swinging at you with their smaller creatures that they don't want blocked throughout a game. So, this land can help mitigate some of that damage while also giving you a political tool to use later to gain favor from players if you use it to help protect them too. So that concludes the deck tech for Rutha Mercurial Artist that I helped my friend Robbie design. All in all, I think it's a very fun deck and has a different spin on the typical spell slinger strategy since most of your spells are all copies of Dragon's Approach, which you should easily be able to cast at least five of in a game and will be really fun to tutor and play Dragons out for free. I also felt that the deck always had an impact in the game because it was constantly bringing everyone's life totals down with either damage from Dragon's Approach or other burn effects in the deck. So in the comments down below, let me know what you think of this build and if you have any suggestions for us. And again, if you're interested, I'll have the links to Robbie's Twitch account in the description below. So go ahead on over and show him some love. Thanks for watching and I hope you all have a great day.